you everybody for being here. Thank you for WIDA for this chance. This is a rather very introductory talk that I'm making here today. It's closer to a conceptual note than proper to a result with resulting findings and so forth. But I do hope that it has still some uh, uh, value or that it makes still some sense to be here talking to you today. First of all, because we are trying to shed some light into Prosavana, which is nowadays one of the most controversial uh, uh, development cooperation programs in northern Mozambique that is taking place in northern Mozambique, and it's maybe uh, one of the, the most controversial development cooperation programs in Africa nowadays. And second, because we are trying to establish or, or re-establish, do a review of the literature and re-establish some critical points, critical elements that we believe that exist uh, between contract farming and, uh, and um, uh, inclusive growth in Africa. Contract farming, as many of you know, has re-emerged as, as a popular solution given by different donor communities and by different multilateral institutions, as, especially as a response to the claims against uh, uh, land grabbing. Um, well, uh, for those who have been following Mozambique's recent development path, this is quite very obvious and familiar. Mozambique has been experiencing very high levels of GDP growth, average 8% a year from the past 20, 20 years. Rates have been especially stable in the past, ten, in the past decade. It has been what we call donor darling, has received more aid per capita than equivalent countries in terms of human development index. Uh, it has experienced a recent impressive boom in terms of FDI. Here, uh, for the first time, the levels of FDI, they have surpassed the, left, the levels of uh, official development assistance. Uh, but extreme poverty uh, has not been declining anymore in one of the poorest countries of the world. Of course, especially coming from a session where we are discussing the quality of these data, and in case of Mozambique, the last data that we have available, the last survey that we have available, is from, from 2008, 2009, which was especially a bad year in terms of agricultural production, and for sure that affects the, the comparison base that we had before. Uh, but it's still other indicators like child malnutrition, both chronic and, uh, and, um, uh, and acute. They haven't shown much progress in, in, the, recent, in the recent years. Uh, what we know is that growth has been linked to a few foreign invested mega projects. They're quite uh, uh, important in the case of the Mozambican development path, especially in gas and mineral sector. Uh, they're uh, capital intensive, they rely a lot on, they export most of their production, they have very few linkages to the national economy and also very few linkages to the national budget during, because of uh, uh, widespread fiscal exemptions. Uh, and what we also know, it's quite clear from the recent development path picture of Mozambique, agriculture has clearly been lagging behind. Uh, productivity has stagnated, food production per capita has also being quite quite disappointing. Uh, technical progress is totally has uh, has also stagnated. If you check the number of extensionists available, it has also stagnated. In this context, uh, there was the emergency of Rosavana, which uh, uh, proposes a solution to this uh, uh, um, investment problem in the in the, in Mozambican agriculture and. It proposes to bring in a new framework or a new development model for the agricultural sector in Mozambique and to lift up agricultural sector there. It's a trilateral development cooperation program. It involves the government of Japan, Brazil, and, uh, and Mozambique. Uh, in the Nakala corridor, it involves three provinces and 19 districts and should affect the life of uh, 4.3 million people. And a colleague of mine was just saying that it represents also something around 9% of the uh, cultivated area in the country. It has three components. One is technological transfer. That's the company that is, the component that is quite well advanced. It's being carried out by a Brazilian uh, research, agricultural research institution, uh, state-owned. And Brapa, which has an office in, in, in Mozambique for quite a long time. Uh, the general idea is that Brazil has developed a tropical agricultural technology that could re be replicated in Africa. And um, uh, the more people using it, more value it would have. So 
uh, Brazilian government is, is, is supporting that quite, quite strongly. The second component, uh, this first company has started in 2011 and should last for at least six years. Then there is a second component of elaboration of a master plan that is going to give the general guidelines for agricultural development in the region. It was supposed to be finished in this year, in, uh, uh, now in August. It was delayed to next year because of a lot of pressure and a lot of criticism to the program so far. And a new development models and extension that has just started, it's, it, it's in its formulation phase now. So in total, it's a long-term project, it's 20 years pro, pro, uh, long-term program, 20 years, and it's inserted in a large web of private infrastructure projects, public as well, that are taking place uh, uh, in the region and a number of uh, land deals that are also taking place in the same region. These investments, well, there's a number of them here, but two key actors. One of them is Vale, which is the second biggest mining company in the world. It's Brazilian owned, and it operates a, a coal mine uh, in the Lockland province of Tet, and it's uh, also responsible for operating the railroad that crosses the Nakala corridor. And uh, it's investing on the rehabilitation. It's building a new path that is going to cross Malawi, and it's working on the rehabilitation of, uh, of the whole of the whole way, it's over 900 kilometers. Also, a number of roads are being, are being um, either constructed or renewed. This, this one is, is quite advanced. And um, it's financed with, uh, with uh, Japanese financing lines, also in, linked to, to, to Pro Savannah. Uh, another important thing is a, a, a phosphate mine that is also owned by Valley and that they hope that once the agricultural projects are doing well in the region, they will be able to supply uh, fertilizers to the farmers in the region, well, and a number of other ones. Uh, and also some land investments that are taking place with more and more pace in the region. Um, there is a project that is in its elaboration phase, and it's being carried out by FGV Projetos, who is the same Brazilian consulting company that is working for uh, the master plan of Pro Savannah, and they're building what they call the Nakala Fund. It's supposed to be, it hopes to raise $2 billion in 10 years to finance agribusiness investors interested in investing in the corridor. It has promoted a couple of road shows in Brazil, it has taken a couple of investors to, actually not a couple, but 70 Brazilian agribusiness investors to, to Mozambique, and it has uh, it started the process of, um, of, uh, of, uh, of road show. So, uh, however, the program has been highly contested so far by National Mozambican Civil Society, as well with uh, links with some international and Brazilian social movements, including the most recent one. There is a number of different uh, uh, um, open letters, or, but the most recent one, it's a common open letter written by 13 different national organizations in which they call for the immediate uh, suspension and revision of, uh, of the program. It's addressed to the presidents of Brazil, uh, Mozambique, and the prime minister of, uh, of Japan. Um, well, we, I say this is extremely pre pre preliminary because uh, the, first, our fir the first phase of our research, it took us uh, about two months to do some qualitative work in terms of data collection and interviews. Uh, we were doing another thing more related to political science to compare the discourse of South-South Development Cooperation to the, its actual practice in the field. And uh, we came out with uh, some critical aspects in the formulation of the program. Some previous re researchers have already highlighted some of the points that we confirm. Uh, first of all, it's the very low level of transparency. It's very hard to get any material from the project. Um, for example, the last version that we got of the master plan, it was leaked through by, by civil society. Uh, there is a big difficulty in coordination between Brazilian and, uh, and uh, Japanese teams. Uh, now that the program is facing a number of difficulties, it became popular that one team is blaming the other for the, for, for the problems. But also we found in the process of elaboration of the programs a lot of inconsistencies between what, are, what would be the desirable targets, elemental targets, in terms of uh, land uh, concentration or land systems that would, they would like to promote. 
and a high degree of incoherences in the project documents and discourse. For example, a typical one that's that in the beginning they were arguing that uh, ProSavana would be a replica of Prodesser, which was a program for the development of Cerrado in Brazil in the 70s that was financed by the Japanese government. Uh, once it's about the same latitude, the conditions technically in the beginning they thought would be the same and blah, blah, blah. Later on, they were highly criticized for this because it's an area with very high uh, uh, land concentration in Brazil. So they understood that, okay, so we're going to replicate the huge plantations to, 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 to Mozambique. And they came back and said, no, 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 it's not a replica of Prodesser. The, they rebuilt all the, all the discourse and now all the effort is, is trying to, 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 to disconnect Pro Savannah from Prodesser. We also found that there is a huge lack of a participatory approach. Actually, this is not at all a consideration from the program. The master plan had so far been elaborated by the Japanese and the Brazilian consulting teams with very limited participation from local communities and civil societies. Uh, there started to be some presentations to the local communities in the beginning of this year. We followed some of them. Uh, but the methodology has been mainly spreading information and the consultants, they, they speak openly that they, they are, they are uh, resistance, resisting to the, to the criticism and trying to explain the program, but nothing close to, to, to a proper participatory methodology. There has been a marginal involvement of the, of the Mozambican government in the, in the elaboration of the master plan. This is confirmed by the three parts involved. And from the Brazilian perspective, there has been an important space given to private actors in both uh, or in, in, in policy formulation, operationalization, and in terms of self-regulation. Uh, well, what does then, what's the development strategy that is proposed by, by this Pro Savannah? They follow a value chain approach. So it's the establishment of clusters based on their cultural potential, land use, environmental constraints of different zones. They do a very carefully, careful zoning of the area. They have very interesting maps available. Uh, and they aim to give it to the Mozambican government so they can guide investors, new investors that are coming according to land occupation and land availability. availability. So each cluster is to be set in motion by a pioneer core project that the, the private company should develop and these, close, these clusters, usually they propose a combination of different land use systems from large scale corporate agribusiness to family farming. There are two exceptions that don't propose these combinations. One is the cluster that is uh, exclusively for family food production and another cluster that is exclusively for um, a large scale plantation. They're suggesting they design a cluster for 60,000 hectares for the production of maize, soybeans, sunflowers, and poultry. It would be a single investor, which is huge for, for a Mozambican uh, uh, um, basis. Uh, personally, I don't believe that this will stay in the program. It, it is one of the, 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 the most criticized elements. But the solution most often proposed by the program to couple these uh, large-scale foreign investors without dispossessing automatically the small ones is contract farming. So contract farming is the, 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 the mainstream solution that they propose. Uh, contract farming is a business model in which you have this central processing unit that establishes the network of outgrowers who supply a certain commodity according to conditions previously defined in a contract. It can take various forms. Uh, uh, we have a vast list of experiences, both in Mozambique and everywhere, in South, Southeast Asia and other parts of, uh, of Africa and in, in, in Latin America. Sometimes the central unit has its own farm, which it also produces and buys from the others, from suppliers. Other times, it's only a processor or only an exporter unit that doesn't, doesn't produce or doesn't, doesn't plant. Uh, the expected advantages is that, first of all, the small producers would have a short market, they would have access to input and technological assistance, and higher stability of income, or, or and in many cases, higher income, quite easily uh, uh, guaranteed. The terms of such schemes, they vary considerably, and these schemes have gained momentum again as part of the response of the wave of criticism against land grabbing, large scale, as I said before. Uh, large-scale for FDI are now presented as part of this response to low agricultural productivity in Africa if coupled with schemes that allow the integration of small-scale farmers into this value chain. 
However, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, intrinsic risks associated to contract farming that have been uh, uh, totally ignored by ProSavanna so far, and I would say by most of the programs that uh, propose these types of, uh, of schemes. And uh, our argument is that if the purpose is to have inclusive growth. These schemes they need from right from the beginning to have a very careful modeling in a way that they can promote and can help to promote this type of uh, 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 pro poor results. Um, our first uh, 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 risk, and later on we will we are planning uh, several um, different uh, uh, investigations to. to to, to evaluate to each degree this is happening or not in the contract farming schemes that are happening in this, in this, in this zone in Mozambique. The first risk is related to food insecurity, the risk of reduced marked food supplies affecting the regional food availability and prices. This is especially concerning for people who are out of schemes. Once poorer farmers tend to be uh, uh, out of these schemes, if the net availability of food uh, decreases, prices could go up and they would be the first one affected by, by food insecurity. So as I said, given that non-participants are like to include the very poorest, the scenario is quite, quite especially concerning. The exclusion of poorer farmers in the absence of this proper regulation support, poorer farmers are often not, not selected to become a contractor. Dependency and indebtedness, the problem with debt is a quite important one. When these, once these inputs are typically advanced by the firm on credit to be repaid but with interest by the outgrower, the risk of indebt indebtedness is, is quite relevant. We already know this is happening in some soya uh, contract farming in, in, in the corridor of Nakala. Um, Disruption of cultivation methods, it can be argued that this is not the case in Mozambique. Once methods being used are extremely basic still, but patterns that have emerged from optimal utilization of local available resources might be, might be lost once the company leaves. And the inherent power imbalance of contract farming that needs to be addressed in these schemes engendered various degrees of risk depending on farmers' relative bargaining power. Uh, also, gender pro problems are often a result of these schemes. Uh, in a context where poverty prevails, no other commercial activities are given to local farmers uh, and no mediator is brought in, the dominant agent in the agri-food chain may be able to structure the operation its own advantage. So, uh, for Savannah, we are always a fitting example of this trend, of this prescription of contract farming as being uh, a solution as a way to allow the entrance of foreign direct investments without dispossessing local farmers. However, if not designed with explicitly proper growth, contract farming can be a powerful mechanism leading to exclusive or excluding growth. Um, first of all, it has been marked by these three critical factors we have highlighted in, in its uh, formulating process. And these uh, um, critical aspects, they tend to aggravate these uh, uh, risks that are inherent to contract farming. We can see some impacts already. The de demand side of agricultural policies, which has been a very important demand from local civil society, is totally missing from, from Pro Savannah. The same happens with some agroecological methods, especially related to native seeds. That is something that Brazil has quite advanced technology on that, and it, the transmission is not happening though it's also demanding from, from civil society, Mozambican civil society. There has been no discussion over taxes, over land use by foreigners, although local academics in Mozambique have been stressing the need to avoid fiscal incentives that mark the mega projects. And the, in general terms, the challenge and task for designing schemes that set conditionality to foreign investors, strengthen the bargaining power uh, of growers, and define favorable terms for poor farmers are unlikely to materialize under the current planning and implementation practices of ProSavana. Thank you.